In this video, we'll look at how you can change the appearance of objects in the viewport and how to select which viewport elements to display. The display options in Maya are pretty much the same as the display modes that you know in Softimage. You can select most display mode options in the viewport's shading menu or as icons in the panel toolbar. As in Softimage, these display options are set per viewport so that even with the same camera selected in multiple viewports, you can have different display modes for each one. If you want more viewport real estate, you can press Ctrl plus Shift plus M to toggle the display of the panel toolbar at the top of the viewport. To see a bounding box representation of the objects, select Shading Bounding Box. You can choose Wireframe from the Shading menu or click the wireframe icon or press 4 for a standard wireframe view. In our scene, the color of the object's wireframes are taken from the layers in which they're stored. If you want smoother lines for the wireframe, choose Shading Smooth Wireframe, whose effects may be more noticeable when you're using the legacy renderers. If you want to change the default line width, Open the Preferences window, click Display, and drag the Line Width slider. Click the Smooth Shade All icon or press 5 to show the object's base material, whatever that is. For example, the top of the rocket has a Fong material, while the rest of it has a Blin material. When Smooth Shade All is active, you can click the default material icon, which overrides other materials and textures with a special version of the Lambert material that is the default in Maya. Click the Wireframe on Shaded icon to keep a wireframe on top of shaded or textured objects. Click the Textured icon or press 6 to show the texture on top of the base material that you get with the Smooth Shade All option. If you don't see the texture, make sure to turn off the default material, which overrides the texture. Click the light icon, or press 7, to show the effects of all lights you have created, excluding the default scene light. If the lights are on, click the shadow icon to display shadows for objects. You can also select default lighting and all lights from the lighting menu, as well as displaying the effect of only selected lights or no lights at all. The flat lighting option uses an ambient light that gives an effect that's similar to the texture decal mode in Softimage if textures are on. If shading is on, the effect is similar to the constant display mode. And if wireframe on shaded is also on, you can create an effect that's similar to hidden line display mode in Softimage. If you don't want to see the object material's color, just select the default material option. The X-ray mode in Maya is similar to its counterpart in Softimage, except that it displays only in transparent mode, and not with the screen and overlay display modes as you have in Softimage. However, in Maya you can choose which scene elements are affected by the X-ray mode. You can use X-ray for all objects in the scene, use X-ray for only the selected components on an object, or use X-ray for only skinned or enveloped skeletons. Once you have set up a viewport as you like, you can choose Shading Apply Current to All to copy the shading settings from this viewport to all other viewports. The way that objects are displayed in your scene depends a lot on the viewport renderer. There are three viewport renders in Maya that you can select from the renderer menu. You may want to use either of the legacy renders if you want faster viewport interaction and render quality doesn't matter as much. But the default renderer in Maya 2015 is viewport 2.0. This renderer is like the high-quality display mode in Softimage, giving you as close to a final rendered look as possible, and with good performance. It can display a lot of scene elements with detail that the other two renderers don't display as well, such as particles, end particles, paint effects, tune, end cloth, and hair, and fluids. 
You can use these icons to display effects that are visible only with the Viewport 2.0 renderer, such as Ambient Occlusion, Motion Blur, Anti-Aliasing, which is already on, and Depth of Field. In the Preferences window, you can select the default rendering engine for Viewport 2.0. Click Display and select either OpenGL or DirectX 11. You can also make sure that Viewport 2.0 is the default renderer. To set up the Viewport 2.0 renderer, open its Options box. There are plenty of options, so you should read the documentation for a good idea of what to set and how to optimize it. You can also watch the video Autodesk Maya 2015 Viewport 2.0 on the Autodesk YouTube channel for more information on this renderer. In addition to how objects are displayed, you can decide which viewport elements to display. You can set the defaults for these elements in the Preferences window on the Display page. The View Axis, the Origin Axis, the Grid, and the Background Gradient. You can press Alt plus B to quickly toggle among the gradient and the three default background colors. You can change their colors in the Color Settings window. In the 3D Views section, you can set the current background color or the background gradient top and bottom colors. You can toggle the display of viewport elements from the Show menu in each viewport. You can turn off the transform manipulators, such as if you're tweaking the animation, but you don't want the manipulators to clutter the view. You can toggle the grid display here, or click its icon in the panel toolbar. If you want to toggle the display of the grid for all viewports, choose Display Grid. You can open the grid's options box to set up how it looks. Make sure to click Apply to see the changes. The HUD option toggles the display of the Heads Up display options. Which are similar to the Stats options in the Camera Visibility Property Editor in Softimage. You can select which options to include in the HUD from the Display Heads Up display menu such as object details, poly count, frame rate, current frame, and so on. Press Ctrl to keep this menu open as you select multiple options from it. In the Color Settings window, you can change the colors of the HUD text. To display more information in the HUD, there are several options in the Bonus Tools menu, including a little Control UI for the HUD options. You can watch Stephen Rosell's YouTube video, Maya Bonus Tools Measurement HUDs, for more information on using these tools. As well as the video, Maya Bonus Tools 2015, What's New? In the next video, we'll look at selecting objects and components in Maya.